okay i hope i'm audible to all students who are attending this lecture of mathematical methods for economics part 2 okay we continue with our lectures on integration formally this is chapter 10 of the book i prefer to follow for this course which is sitter and hammer the fourth edition of this book okay now all students can recall that in the previous lecture of integration we were looking at the concept of how to find the area under the curve and above the x axis we had also looked at the case where we have to find the area above the curve and below the x axis okay we had also discussed about definite integral indefinite integrals in the previous lecture so i intend to first revise in this lecture again with all students the concept of indefinite integrals all students attending this lecture can write this indefinite integrals so let's look at the statement integral small f of x dx is equal to capital f of x plus c where derivative of capital f of x gives you back small f of x so i can say that capital f of x is the anti derivative of small f of x okay i can say that capital f of x is the anti derivative i can say anti derivative or integral of small f of x so students can write where small f of x is called the integrand small f of x is called the integrand c is called the constant of integration c is called the constant of integration okay so we had done this in the previous lecture then moving forward quickly we can now look at the rules for indefinite integrals this is again going to be a revision in this lecture rules for indefinite integrals <clears throat> okay so let's look at these rules one by one rule number 1 integral x to the power a dx is x to the power a plus 1 upon a plus 1 plus c okay x to the power a ka integral is x to the power a plus 1 upon a plus 1 plus c and a should not be equal to minus 1 because if a is equal to minus 1 the denominator becomes zero and the expression becomes not defined second rule integral 1 upon x dx is ln mod x plus c that means you should know this rule integral of the reciprocal function 1 upon x dx is ln mod x plus c the third rule is <coughs> integral e to the power ax dx is e to the power ax divided by a plus c again this integral is well defined when a is not equal to 0 <coughs> the fourth rule integral a to the power x dx we can write as a to the power x upon ln a plus c now guys ln a should not be equal to 0 ln a should not be equal to 0 which implies a should not be equal to 1 because all of us know that ln 1 is 0 and at the same time when is ln a well defined ln a is well defined if a is strictly greater than 
because we know that ln of 0 is minus infinity. So, from my mathematical methods for economics part 1 course, students can recall that the logarithmic function is well defined. That means ln a is well defined if a is strictly positive. Okay, so these are the four rules for indefinite integrals, which we had covered in the previous lecture. Okay, and then we had also done some properties. We had also done some properties, so we can write properties of indefinite integrals. properties of indefinite integrals which are as follows first property is called the constant multiple property constant multiple property now this property simply states that integral of a times f of x dx is equal to a times the integral of f of x dx. That means if a constant is multiplied by the function, the constant will come out of the integration sign. Okay, where students can write that a is a real constant. A is a real constant. Second property, sum of the integrals, Integ I can say integral of a sum is the sum of integrals. Integral of a sum is the sum of integrals. Okay. Then I can extend this and I can say if I take the difference integral of a difference is the difference of integrals. So I can write integral of difference. Is the difference of integrals. Okay, uh, so we had done these properties in the previous lecture. We had done the rules for indefinite integrals in the previous lecture. Okay, now let us do one question. Let us do a few practice questions based on indefinite integrals. So our heading is practice questions based on indefinite integrals. So let's look at these questions one by one. So question number one for this lecture. Find the integral. Find the integral 3x4 plus 5x square minus 2 times dx. Let's quickly solve this, guys. So consider integral of 3x4 plus 5x square minus 2 times dx. Now this I can write as 3 times constants come out. All constants will come out of integral. Okay. We have just learned x to the power a ka integral is x to the power a plus 1 upon a plus 1. So x to the power 4 ka integral is x to the power 4 plus 1 upon 4 plus 1 plus 5 times integral of x square is x to the power 2 plus 1 upon 2 plus 1 minus 2 times integral of dx is only x plus the constant of integration c. So I can write this. My answer is 3x to the power 5 upon 5 plus 5x to the power 3 upon 3 minus 2x plus c. This is the final answer for this question. Okay, 
let's now look at question 2 verify that in an interval verify that in an interval where ax plus b is positive show that integral of x upon the square root of ax plus b times dx comes out to be equal to 2 upon 3a square times ax minus 2b times the square root of ax plus b plus c so guys this is what we need to verify okay we need to show that in an interval where ax plus b is strictly positive because you can see ax plus b is in the denominator it has to be strictly positive we need to show that lhs is equal to rhs now i ask all students what is this so if i ask you what is this function and what is this function so let's solve this so clearly small f of x is x upon the square root of ax plus b and we are given that capital f of x is 2 upon 3a square times ax minus 2b times the square root of ax plus b now i need to verify so guys how can i verify this so we can show we can show that if i differentiate capital f of x i should get back small f of x if i am able to show this it means i am able to show that the integral of this is equal to this so this is my small f of x from the question this is my capital f of x given in the question i just have to differentiate capital f of x and show it to be equal to small f of x so can we differentiate capital f of x so consider capital f of x which is 2 upon 3a square times ax minus 2b times ax plus b to the power half i can write it like this i can use the product rule guys if you differentiate f dash x what do we get 2 upon 3a square times ax minus 2b into derivative of this is half times ax plus b to the power half minus 1 M plus ax plus b to the power half into ax minus 2b ka derivative with respect to x is a so we have applied the product rule of differentiation which students have learned in my mathematical methods for economics part 1 course okay so if we solve this further let's see what do we get so i am erasing the initial part of the solution and let's solve this up further let's see what do we get so i can write f dash x is 2 upon 3a square times half into ax minus 2b times ax plus b to the power minus half plus a times ax plus b to the power half okay if i erase the bottom portion of the screen and if i continue to solve this expression let's see what do we get okay so erasing all this so i can write my f dash x comes out as 2 upon 3a square times half times ax minus 2b upon ax plus b to the power half plus a times ax plus b to the power half i can take the lcm so i can take 2 times ax plus b to the power half as the lcm i get ax minus 2b plus becomes 2a okay 
so it becomes 2a so if i further solve this 2 and 2 cancel out in the numerator i get let's see what do we get in the numerator so this is 2 excuse me a. sir yeah ask your doubt please uh, sir over here it's uh, ax plus b after taking uh, lcm sir it's ax plus b to the power 1 sir because we'll multiply it with that side yeah exactly yeah exactly yeah so i'm correcting that so this becomes so if i take the lcm as a 2 times ax plus b to the power half this becomes 2a times ax plus b to the power to the power 1 yes so this is what it becomes okay now 2 and 2 are getting cancelled let's see what the numerator becomes ax minus 2b plus 2a square x plus 2ab upon 3a square times ax plus b to the power half okay this is what we are getting now let's see what how we can further simplify this up so 2a square x i can write 2a square x plus 2ab 2a square x plus 2ab plus let's see what do we get we get ax minus 2b let me just check out there is some mistake we have made somewhere let's clarify that mistake uh, this step is absolutely correct this step is also correct how uh, 2 upon 3a square times half times ax minus 2b into ax plus b to the power minus half plus a times ax plus b to the power half then let's look at this step so this is also absolutely correct then we get 2 upon 3a square times this is also correct this is also correct then 2 and 2 are getting cancelled so we get ax minus 2b plus 2a square x plus 2ab okay now uh, let's factorize so we'll have to factorize so 2a square x plus 2ab plus ax minus 2b upon 3a square times ax plus b to the power half now let's factorize and let's see what do we get. So again, I'm erasing the initial part of the solution. Okay, so let's see what can possibly be taken as common. So this becomes, so in this case, I can take, I can take 2a square common. And I'm left with x plus ab. Okay, I think this is what we are left with 2a square x plus 2 plus 2 plus b. This is, uh, I think, b. Okay, and in this, I can take what common? I can take in ax minus 2b, I think we, can, we cannot take anything common. So, Let's yes, not just give me one minute. Okay, so guys, let's solve this question again because um, some error has been made somewhere because of which the answer is not exactly coming out as the way we want. So let's so go back to solving this question from the beginning. So we are given small f of x, which is x upon the square root of ax plus b and capital F of x is 
2 upon 3a square times ax minus 2b times ax plus b to the power half. Excuse me, sir. Let me solve the question. Let me solve the question first, and then we can come back to, for doubts and all. Let me just uh, in check. This chapter, sir, I want to clear. In this step, you are doing there with. Okay, so now let's differentiate f dash x. Let's uh, find the derivative of capital F of x. So if I differentiate again, I get 2 upon 3a square times ax minus 2b into what's the derivative of this? Half times ax plus b to the power half minus 1 and ax plus b itself ka derivative is a plus ax plus b to the power half into ax minus 2b ka derivative with respect to x is a. Now let's work this out forward. So 2 upon 3a square times half times ax minus 2b and then we also have an a times ax plus b to the power minus half plus a times ax plus b to the power half. Okay, so now let's see what do we get. I am erasing the initial part. So we get f dash x as 2 upon 3a square times half times a square x minus 2ab. So I have multiplied a with this term divided by ax plus b to the power half plus a times ax plus b to the power half. Okay, if I erase these steps and if I continue with the solution further, let's see what do we get. So my f dash x becomes 2 upon 3a square times 2ax plus b to the power half can be taken as the LCM now. So we get a square x minus 2ab plus 2a times ax plus b to the power half into ax plus b to the power half makes it ax plus b. 2 and 2 cancel out. So my f dash x comes out as 1 upon 3a square times a square x minus 2ab plus 2a square x plus 2ab upon ax plus b to the power half minus 2ab plus 2ab cancel out. We get 1 upon 3a square times 2a square x plus a square x makes it 3a square x upon ax plus b to the power half I can write as square root of ax plus b 3a square 3a square cancel out so this comes out as x upon square root of ax plus b which is nothing but small f of x so I think now our solution is absolutely clear okay uh, when I was solving it before definitely there was an a which was missing that because of which the whole solution uh, was not correct but I've solved the question again and hoping this time all students have understood it we start with capital F of x we differentiate this and we show it to be equal to small f of x so I can say hence verified okay now let's look at another practice question question three Let's look at this question. Find, find all the functions, find all the functions capital F of X such that, such that the derivative of capital F of X is equal to minus X minus 1 ka square 
the question asks us also also find in particular also find in particular the function whose graph passes through whose graph passes through the point x0 y0 equal to 1 comma 1 okay so we need to find all the functions capital f of x such that if you differentiate capital f of x you get minus x minus 1 square and the question asks us to also find in particular the function whose graph passes through 1 comma 1 now what are we given guys we know that we know that capital f dash x ka derivative is nothing but small f of x which is given to us in the question as minus x minus 1 square now how will i find capital f of x it will be integral of small f of x dx which will be integral of minus x minus 1 ka square dx which i can write as minus can come out of the integral what is my capital f of x integral of x minus 1 ka square will be x minus 1 to the power 2 plus 1 upon 2 plus 1 plus c so i can write my capital f of x is minus x minus 1 cube upon 3 plus c this is my capital f of x now the question is asking us find in particular the function whose graph passes through this point so guys we have found the function in general so this must pass through 1 comma 1 this must pass through 1 comma 1 because now we want to find the solution in particular in general this is my solution but in particular if it passes through 1 comma 1 then 1 comma 1 must satisfy this equation so if i erase the initial part and if i solve it further what do we get so i can write if i put f of x as 1 and x is also 1 i can solve for c so 1 is equal to 0 plus c which implies c is equal to 1 so in particular what is my solution i can just put the value of c back so therefore the graph particularly passing the graph particularly passing through 1 comma 1 is given by f of x equals minus x minus 1 ka cube by 3 plus what is the value of c 1 so this is your final answer for this question So hope all students have understood this and have no doubts now if you want you can plot this graph i suppose you want to plot this graph it's not tough now how do we plot these graphs first of all let's take some reference points and check so if i put so if f of x is 0 when will f of x be 0 if f of x is 0 so i can write 0 is equal to minus x minus 1 ka cube by 3 plus 1 so i can write x minus 1 ka cube by 3 is equal to 1 okay so this implies x minus 1 ka cube is equal to 3 okay so basically we are going to get x in terms of square in in roots now okay so let's instead of taking this let's uh, let me not take this actually because this is no, going to give us decimals 
So to plot it, let me take the other way around. Suppose I take it as, suppose my x is 0. If x is 0, my f of x will be equal to minus 0 minus 1 ka q by 3 plus 1. So that will be minus of minus 1 ka cube is minus 1 by 3 plus 1, which is 1 plus 1 by 3, which is 4 by 3. So when x is 0, f of x is 4 by 3. You can check for monotonicity, guys. Is it downward sloping or upward sloping? So if you find out f dash x, it is minus 3 times x minus 1 square by 3. So my f dash x comes out as minus of x minus 1 ka square, which is negative. That means downward sloping. f dash x is negative, so downward sloping. For concavity, convexity, find the double derivative. That is minus 2 times x minus 1. Okay, so you can clearly see that if you work out the double derivative, now that is also coming out as negative. Double derivative is coming out as negative if your x is positive. So in the positive quadrant, your double derivative is coming out as negative. However, so I can say if x is greater than 1, the function is concave because if you put x greater than 1, your f double dash x becomes negative. But if your x is less than 1, your function is convex. Because if you put x less than 1 here, then your double derivative becomes positive. So this is negative for x greater than 1. Okay. So I can now make a graph, a rough sketch of this. Students should know how to plot the rough sketch of any graph. So if we make the graph of this function, this is x, this is f of x. You can clearly see when x is 0, f of x is 4 by 3. 4 by 3 means it's going to pass through. So this is 4 by 3. Positive value. Okay. You can also see, guys, another reference point. When x is 1, f of x is also 1. So my f of x has come out as minus 1 upon 3 times x minus 1 ka q plus c. Clearly, you can see that when x is 1 and c has come out as 1. When x is 1, you can see f of x is also 1. So the graph is passing through 1 comma 1. Okay. You can clearly see it's downward sloping and for x greater than 1, it is concave. But for x less than 1, it's downward sloping but convex. So this is your graph. This is the rough sketch of the graph which you can see on the screen. Okay, it passes through 1 comma 1, it's downward sloping. For x greater than 1, it's concave. For x less than 1, it's convex. And it's passing through the point 4 comma 3. Okay, so guys, this is where I intend to stop in this particular lecture. We have discussed the concept of definite, indefinite integrals. And we have done a few practice questions uh, based on indefinite integrals. So I hope all students have enjoyed this lecture. Any doubt? You can unmute your mics and ask or call up or mail me your doubts at divine school of economics at the rate gmail.com. So this is where I stop in this lecture.